Hello viewers, in today's class we are going to discuss an important uh, concept from Dirac Delta function, right? So in this uh, lecture we'll see how we can uh, represent uh, Dirac Delta function in terms of uh, uh, Lorentzian function, right? So we know that uh, Dirac Delta function plays a vital role in mathematical physics, right? And in this lecture, we'll see uh, the representation of Dirac Delta function uh, when we use uh, the Lorentzian function, right? So let us start. So viewers, uh, let us first see what is a Lorentzian function, right? See, the Lorentzian function is defined as ln of x is equal to uh, the limit of this function that is limit n tends to infinity and we have n over pi and here we have 1 plus n square x square right so this is the definition of Lorentz function right so here uh, the notation we are using is ln of x that is limit n tends to infinity and here uh, we have a function of x that is n over pi divided by 1 plus n square x square, right? So the Lorentz function is a sequence in uh, terms of n, right? So the objective of this uh, lecture is to uh, represent uh, the Dirac delta function uh, in terms of this uh, Lorentzian function. Right now, see, uh, we know that uh, the Dirac delta function uh, is uh, defined by uh, this peak. That is, if we have uh, here uh, the x axis and here we have the uh, delta function, then for x is equal to zero, uh, this spike or this peak it represents uh, the Dirac delta function, right. So this strip, the area of this strip is one, right? So we always write minus infinity to infinity. And here we have delta n of x dx is equal to one, right? So this integral represents that uh, the area of this strip or this spike is one, right? So we'll see the equivalence of Dirac delta function and the Lorentzian function. So viewers, uh, the Dirac delta function can be represented uh, in a number of ways, right? And here uh, we are discussing that this Lorentz function is equivalent to uh, the Dirac delta function, right? So we can write delta of uh, delta n of x is equal to uh, this Lorentzian uh, function, right? So to prove that uh, this Lorentzian function, that is this limit, right? So limit n tends to infinity n over pi uh, divided by 1 plus n square x square. This limit uh, represents the direct delta function, right? So in order to prove this equivalence, what we have to do, uh, we have to prove that the value of this integral is equal to 1, right? Because this integral shows that the total area uh, that is covered by a Dirac delta function at x is equal to 0 is unity, right? That is 1. So we have to uh, prove that this integral that is minus infinity to infinity delta n of x dx should be equal to 1, right? So let us uh, prove that this integral is equal to 1 uh, using uh, this limit in place of uh, this Dirac delta function that is the delta n of x. So now uh, let us uh, take this integral and uh, we'll write 
uh, minus infinity to infinity and for delta n of x uh, we can write this Lorentz function that is ln of x right now this uh, function ln of x is now rep uh, replaced by uh, this limit right so now we can write minus infinity to infinity and here we have limit n tends to infinity and we have n over pi uh, divided by 1 plus n square x square and here we have dx right so now uh, what we will do I uh, will take this limit notation outside the integral sign so we have limit n tends to infinity integral from minus infinity to infinity and here uh, we can now write uh, 1 over pi because 1 over pi is a constant we can take it outside the uh, integral sign and we have n dx uh, divided by 1 plus n square x square right so now our uh, aim is to uh, solve this integral right so in order to solve this integral uh, what we will do uh, will uh, make use of the method of substitution right so let us uh, take uh, p is equal to nx right so let us introduce the variable p and we are taking p is equal to nx so dp over dx is equal to n because the derivative of x with respect to x is 1 so this is n times 1 that is equal to n right so now uh, here a uh, dp can be written as n dx right okay now see here the limits of integration vary from x is equal to minus infinity to x is equal to infinity right so when x is minus infinity then obviously p is also minus infinity and when x is infinite then p is also infinite right okay so now uh, this uh, uh, expression it takes the form that is limit and here we have n tends to infinity right so when n goes to uh, infinity then obviously uh, p also goes to infinity right so we can now write p tends to infinity here we have 1 over pi here we have minus infinity to infinity n dx can be replaced by dp and here we have 1 plus uh, p square because n square x square can be written as nx uh, whole square and nx can be replaced by uh, p so we have p square so now we have integral minus infinity to infinity dp over 1 plus p square so now we have a simple integral right now see uh, we know that the integral dx over 1 plus x square is equal to tan inverse x right so here uh, we have limit uh, p tends to infinity 1 over pi and uh, this integral is dp over 1 plus p square and by virtue of this result we can write it as tan inverse of p and the limits of integration are from minus infinity to infinity right so now we can uh, write it as a limit p tends to infinity and here we have 1 over pi substituting the limits and taking the difference we have tan inverse infinity minus uh, tan inverse of minus infinity right so now uh, here we do not have any uh, term containing p so we can now omit this limit notation so now uh, this integral that is minus infinity to infinity delta n of x dx is equal to uh, 1 over pi and uh, we know that tan inverse infinity is pi by 2 because uh, tan inverse infinity is uh, that is pi by 2 and tan inverse of minus infinity is given by negative of pi by 2 
right because tan pi by 2 is not defined and tan of minus pi by 2 is negative of infinity right so here we have negative and then uh, we can write here uh, minus pi by 2 right so now we have 1 over pi this is pi by 2 plus minus and minus becomes plus so here we have pi by 2 so this is 1 over pi times uh, 2 pi over 2 and 2 to get cancelled pi and pi also get cancelled so we are left with 1 right so we see that the value of this integral is equal to 1 right and uh, we have to prove that the area uh, that is uh, represented by the Dirac delta function at x is equal to 0 from minus infinity to infinity is 1 right so from this discussion we can see that the Dirac delta function uh, represents or it is equivalent to the Lorentzian uh, function right so the Dirac delta function uh, is equivalent to the limit n tends to infinity n over pi divided by 1 plus n square x square right so viewers in the next videos uh, we will see that uh, how we can represent the Dirac delta function in some uh, other forms right